Well, hello there and welcome back. In the last video, I introduced you to an entirely new way of structuring databases, and I put the case that this is probably the way that databases are going to be looking in the future, the way that they're going to be structured at least. And some of you folks are probably freaking out, thinking, oh man, this is heavy, like, you know, a username in two uh, different tables or collections. I mean, this is kind of heavy, right? And what happens if you end up with three or four or who knows, maybe even five tables? I mean, it's just complicated, you know? Well, take a look at this. This is a call center. I just took this picture with my phone and it's really blurry. But this is a call centre that I was doing some work for recently. And in the background there, that's a TV on the wall. Here's another one here. They have them all over the place. And these TVs are showing out statistics from the website and from the company. Like who has the most deals and all of that stuff. Now, this particular company, I don't, I can't tell you offhand how many tables they've got to work their database. But... I can tell you that it's into the hundreds. They have hundreds of tables. And in fact, they have two databases. They need two databases to work the business. And those people that you can see at the phones are leasing cars, okay? Now, I don't know how much you know about car leasing, but I can tell you it's a very, very complicated business. In order to lease a car, well, actually... I don't know how I know this information. I, I, I'm an encyclopedia of useless information, right? But I looked into this. It turns out that to buy a house, you need 21 documents here in the UK, right? I actually found that out, okay? So you need 21 documents to buy a house. To lease a car, at least in the UK, it's not 21 documents, but it's 19, okay? It's almost as complicated as buying a house. So that means that to lease a car, you're going to need the initial inquiry, you're going to need offer forms, um, order forms, and order forms different from an offer form. There's going to be proposal systems where you provide proof of address, banking details, and all of that stuff. Then you're going to have to communicate with the dealers and place the orders. As a matter of fact, one of the IT systems that they use communicates directly with the manufacturers, so there's all of that going on as well. And the upshot of it is that it can all become very, very complicated really, really quickly. Now, I do not know how many tables they have. I could count up, but it's probably maybe about 150 on one database and about maybe 200 on the other. So there's a lot of tables and a lot of room for usernames or emails or something to be used across the entire system. So we need to become comfortable with the idea that data could be duplicated here, there and everywhere. And we need to have an intelligent strategy for anticipating that kind of thing and dealing with that kind of thing. And that's really what I want to talk about in this video. Now, there may be one or two people who are thinking I'm making too big a thing out of this. After all, they can do joins on MongoDB. Look at it. Here's the documentation. See, you can do joins. And they may be saying, well, the thing that I'm using, whether it be MongoDB or Firebase or whatever, well, check it out. They've all been upgraded and now, hallelujah, they can do that stuff. Well, to those people, I would say, Take a close look at the documentation, Starsky, because what you will find is that many of these fancy new features that come in are brought in at the expense of database performance. For example, here in the case of the join that has been added to MongoDB, you'll see, I've highlighted it, that this only works with collections that are not sharded. That means that all of that incredible duplication, all of that magic that lets these databases handle tons and tons of traffic and updates and all of that. Well, guess what? If you're doing joins and trying to use this the way you'd use MySQL, well, tough luck. You're going to miss out. And in fact, the single biggest problem in the web development community, in my opinion, and it's just my personal opinion, but 
I think the sig single biggest problem in IT just now, at least web development, is legions of web developers trying to turn technologies into something that they are not. Now, you look at the amount of Node.js frameworks out there that are trying to be like Laravel, which, by the way, was trying to be like uh, Ruby on Rails, you know? This type of herd mentality where people all say, hey, but we need it to do this, we need it to do this, and then the company kind of eventually folds and they say, all right, we'll give you it. This is a problem. And the intelligent developer is the developer who can differentiate between an upgrade that really brings something technically good to the table or an upgrade that has just been added to appease the voice of dissent. So just look out for that. And when you see, you know, whoever the database provider may be, whether it's Amazon or Google or whoever, remember that they are commercial enterprises. Their primary goal is to try and get people bringing in cash to help the shareholders. So sometimes you may see them adding joins and all sorts of stuff, but it changes nothing. Hear the words of DC. This is the information that you need to hear. All right, so now I'm going to give you three very simple principles for building a future-proof database, and here they are. First one, we want a single endpoint for updates, okay? So think about how Google works. If you're changing your name on Google, this is the page you get. Have a look at that. Notice there are no drop downs for change your date of birth and country or anything. Isolation is the key, okay? So we don't want people to change usernames everywhere. We're looking for a single endpoint where that happens. We want it to be isolated out on its own, and that is the vibe. One endpoint where those updates can get carried out, okay? And make the form simple. Don't be like those idiots that build forms with tons and tons of fields and an image uploader and everything all on the same form. That's how amateurs work, and you are not an amateur. Next, all synchronization to be carried out at the same place. So, if you need to update a comments table or a you know, proposal table or a address table and this table and that table and everything, it must all be carried out at the same place. We are going to need to build something that can take care of all of that and we can look at it and very easily manage it. We don't want to be doing changes here, there and everywhere. Finally, try to use the same property name across the entire database. Try to have the thing saying username everywhere. Don't have it saying username on one table, you name on the next, you underscore name on the next. That is the ingredients for a disaster. Now, this is not always possible, so I have to say try, right? But just try and keep the property names consistent. Can you handle that? Then, okay, that's all cool. So, since we are approaching the finish line. I think the finish line is in sight. And since you are on the verge of becoming a database guru, an API genius, then let's finish this video with a little bit of madness. Let's go into common models member.json and very fearlessly, in a very cavalier fashion, I want you to go in and add in a username. Yes, indeed, that's the kind of thing that we can do. And we can be comfortable with that because we have our three principles and everything's going to be fine. Hey, I just noticed a thing that said notification. You feeling crazy? I know I am. Okay, let's do it. Let's add one in there as well. Who cares? Let's do it, you know. Let's just go wild. We can have this anywhere and everywhere. It's all fine. So I've added username to both of those things, right? Do you know something? I've just noticed order.json sitting quietly in the shadows, hoping that nobody's going to point it out. Well, 
I am feeling crazy. Let's do it. Come on, we'll add it here as well, right? Let's add username on to uh, order.json as well. I know it's crazy. Hey, listen, I agree. It makes no sense at all and we'll probably never even use this. But who cares? Just go crazy and be cool because there's an important thing that I want to show you in the very next video.